Hello friends, in this session I will be introducing you to something called as controllers and compensators. We will also talk about whether both of them are same or not. Also at the same time we will try to understand their importance. Let us begin. <music> So now if you see here, if you up till now, what have we done? We have done time domain analysis as well as we have done frequency domain analysis, right? Yes. Now, if you remember in our time domain analysis, we had talked about percentage MP, which was some time domain parameters, right? Percentage MP was there. Then there was something called as TP, then TR. Then there was TS, TD, there was TS, and we have you know ESS and we had E of T, right? Percentage MP is what maximum peak overshoot. TP is what TP is nothing but the peak time. TR is what TR is nothing but the rise time. TD is what TD is the delay time, and TS is what TS is the settling time. And yes, if you see here, this ESS, it is what it is the steady state error. And if you see this E of T, E of T is what since it is changing with respect to time, we have this E of T, right? Which means it is a dynamic error. Now, similarly, after frequency domain, we have seen that in frequency that the same system will have some frequency domain specifications as well. And those specification or those parameters were what? Those were nothing but MR right mr and mr bandwidth then we had you know gm and pm gm pm is what yes this is nothing but gain margin and this pm is nothing but phase margin right right now if you see you know these were the time domain characteristics and these were those frequency domain specifications yes now we need to understand one very very important thing see here in case of frequency domain if you remember if you remember in case of frequency domain we cannot completely rely on this mr and this bandwidth why i will tell you see we had already talked about that at zeta equal to 0 0.707 if you remember at zeta equal to 0 0.707 if you remember we had talked about that at this instant omega r which is the resonant frequency that frequency and our MR vanishes right why because if you remember this Omega R formula was nothing but Omega N into under root of 1 minus 2 zeta square and if you take square of this one if 0 0.707 if you just square this one it is nothing but equal to what it is nothing but equal to you get approximately 0 0.5 right and if you just put it here that yes omega n into under root of 1 minus 2 times zeta square zeta square is what here yes zeta square is nothing but 0 0.5 so if you think of this 2 into 0 0.5 is nothing but 1 and if you think of this 1 minus 1 is going to be 0 so you understand that omega r vanishes omega r is vanished and if omega r is vanished there is no point of having magnitude at this particular resonant frequency that is nothing but mr you will not be having that too right so we understand that we cannot completely rely on this mr and bandwidth this mr and this bandwidth now what is important for us i will tell you wait yes now another thing if you know that this gm and pm which was there gm and pm we use them that yes when gm and pm gm and pm are both positive right when gm and pm are both positive then in such a case we say that the system is stable right now if you just see here if you think of this gm and pm right yes so this gm and pm are important for us from the point of view of stability definitely yes now see here comes the most important thing if you remember in our last previous session in our last session we had discussed that all the time domain parameters like this percentage mp tp tr td ts e of t and all you know all the parameters and this mr and bandwidth are interrelated means this way 
all are interrelated with each other right all time domain parameters see i am repeating the statement all time domain parameters that is percentage mp tp tr td ts ess e of t are all interrelated with mr and bandwidth but if you see that gm and pm are not interrelated with them they are they do not hold any relation with these time domain parameters i hope you are understanding my point right so if you just think of see these two are interrelated which one all time domain parameters all time domain parameters and this mrn bandwidth are all interrelated or not yes and we have seen that since at some frequency since at some zeta which is equal to 0.707 our omega r and mr vanishes right so we cannot completely rely on this mr and bandwidth yes but if you see even if we don't rely on them still those parameters can be taken care of by this percentage mp tp tr td ts ess etc right why because we know that we have a direct relationship between them yes now if you just observe if you just observe by some means by some means if i am able to alter or if i am able to make changes in these parameters which these parameters mp tp tr td ts ess e of t that is the complete time domain parameters along with gm and pm along with gm and pm if i am able to alter them then yes definitely i can get the best response why because gm and pm will definitely help me in the stability instability point of view yes and these are nothing and this percentage mp tpt or tts are all what they are all time domain parameters those are all time domain specifications of a second order system right yes now see yes if you see this mp tp tr and td if you observe if you observe them then all these parameters all these parameters which are in black they all belong to what they all belong to transient behavior transient behavior right and if you see and yes if you see this ts ess and e of t right this is nothing but settling time then we have ess which is steady state error and this e of t if you see all of these three then these three belong to these three belong to what steady state behavior steady state behavior and we have seen that in a total response in a total response transient behaviors as well as steady state behavior it is the sum of it right now i will tell you what is the difference between a controller and compensator and why we use them see by using either of them either controller or compensator we can get the best possible response how it happens i will explain you in the immediate next sessions but for time being just understand that by using these controllers and compensators we can basically change some time domain or frequency domain parameters now depending on what parameter it is changing i will tell you what is a controller and what is a compensator let us see so we have seen that any response if you see it will have two parts right transient behavior or any system if you see it is going to have transient behavior and steady state behavior right transient behavior and steady state behavior now see listen to me very carefully if by some means i am able to modify these both or i can say improve both improve both right using time domain parameters using time domain parameters then we call the system to be then we have to design a controller getting my point see again if i want to improve the transient behavior as well as the steady state behavior of the system by using time domain parameters or time domain specifications then we have to use controller then in such a case we have to use what controller similarly similarly if i want to improve both of them 
improve both of them by using frequency domain parameters frequency domain parameters are what yes we have just talked about gm pm etc and if you think of this by time domain parameters by time domain parameters i mean t p t d t s etc right yes so if i am able to improve the transient behavior as well as the steady state behavior by using the frequency domain parameter then we call it as a compensator so see actually what happens is you know people don't actually tease this topic why because it is at the end right first thing other thing is people say that it is okay means you know they just have some equations and all like you know alpha ts and all something some equations and all they have and then they say yes okay okay there, there are some equations we will just you know but in exam things doesn't happen that way it is not possible that every time you will have the straight forward questions it may happen that there can be some very very tricky questions as well at times so in such a cases you should be able to deal with everything that is the reason we have to understand what is a compensator as well as what is a you know this controllers everything we have to learn in detail so in the immediate next sessions we will be talking first about compensators and then we will be talking about controllers and then we will definitely take some problems on it right thank you